Good morning, Nick. Oh, Mr. McLaren, Mr. Petkovic. Oh, I'm going to get emotional, and I'm not going to get emotional right now. Oh, so don't, just, uh, don't. Let's get through this. And I know that you've probably had a lot of callers and a lot of complaints and a lot of issues going on and around and, and stuff like that. And, and my two soldiers of Fairfax, uh, <laughs> yes. it, is our last, it, it is our last soiree. But you know what? It, it's been an absolute ball. I've loved every minute. Um, and... Uh, uh, from the minute Clark Forbes actually gave me a call and said, look, um, there's, a, there's a couple of blokes that want to have a chat about media and they want to talk media. And, uh, and Kate Stevenson, who is the producer there for the, the breakfast program and, and uh, long-time worker there at 3AW, suggested that, uh, that Clark talk to me. And, uh, and then, obviously, then I started talking to you guys. We've been doing this for just over two years, boys. Is it that it's long? Great. Yep, that's right. Yeah. God, it's, yep. it's, it's flown, hasn't it, Nick? All right, well, thank you for the kind words, as always, yeah, Nick. Always and, appreciate it, mate. Yeah. Now, we'll get underway, though, and the Australia Day Awards have become rather controversial because of this knighthood that's been awarded. Oh, look, if there was one thing, you would, if there was one thing, we've been talking about this, you know, for, since December, since December and November, saying that, you know, Tony Abbott's going to get this ship. He's going to set it on the right path to success, to, uh, to, to likability, to something, someone that we can actually support and get behind. And the Australia Day, uh, whether it be the Australia of the Year, the, the four big awards that are awarded, went to all to women, by the way, which is great news. And this is probably the first this has ever been done, uh, ever, uh, that women have, uh, have featured in the top four Australian Day awards. But the knighthoods, the knighthoods that have been given away by the Prime Minister, one to uh, Prince Philip, which has got the entire country in uproar in both social and traditional media. It has, and, and not just uh, people of the, the left or the other side or Republicans, but some of the Liberal Party backbenchers especially seem to be a little bemused by it. Oh, not just bemused, but they just cannot believe that in the position that this Prime Minister is in, the position and the precarious position that this Prime Minister is in, I, I'll say this out now, and I, I'd love to, in fact... Uh, I'll be getting both of your mobile numbers after the show so that I can just continually talk to you each week anyway because <laughs> it costs a lot less Nick. to talk to you boys than it does to a psychologist to get this all out of my head. <laughs> but, you know, this is this is actually the death knell for Tony Abbott. I will give him now another three to six months. Really? This is the last wow. dying wish of a man who is, is actually seeing the end of his reign. This is just ridiculous. I mean, to think that even the premiers of uh, the liberal states around this country were all questioned today about this decision, and even they just had to chuckle and go, did not see this one coming, and cannot believe. I mean, these sort of nominations and these kind of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, awards should never, ever be politicised anyway. We should never really do that for that kind of reason. We should be acknowledging what great work Australians are doing, and whether they're doing it in the health or the sciences, um, whatever they're doing in charity, we should be just rewarding and, and, and actually acknowledging these people. But pr a prince receiving a knighthood, what's that all about? What's it mean? And, and for heaven's sake, I mean, although they, he's, he has been the consort of Her Majesty for you know, well, the, the entire 60 years of the reign plus, he, he, the man hasn't really got a great reputation at all as far as I can see. Well, he's always been known for his buffoonery and also to his gaps in the media. He, he pretty much says it how he sees it. And sometimes that's very, you know, that's uh, quite refreshing, but he, he, he really doesn't have a good reputation there, particularly when dealing with uh, sensitive issues. He's, he's been seen to say some really quite outlandish things that, you know, it just wouldn't go well uh, in, a, in today's society. I think he's still living in the 1940s, 1950s, which... Uh, for some, you know, he, he just hasn't been able to get out of. And you would imagine in that little bubble that they call the, the, the Buckingham Palace and the, and the royal family, they probably don't have any real, you know, they're not in touch really with what's going on around them. And this is the feeling that we're getting with Tony Abbott, that he is not in touch with the way that the Australian public are going, uh, the, the Australian electorate are thinking, and even his own party are sitting there going, what are you doing? You're putting more pressure on us than what we really do need at this point. We're struggling to sell a budget here. And by the way, this budget has gone on for a long, long, long time, oh. and it still isn't even close to getting near over the line. 
and uh, he goes away. And, and this was a great opportunity to put the Australian flag on Australia Day. And don't get me wrong, boys, I love this day. This is one of my, this is one of my favourite days of the year to celebrate what a beautiful and wonderful country that we live in. But when we have a Prime Minister who puts up a buffoon that is... Now, that's not fair. When we put uh, Prince Philip up as a, a knight of Australia, when we have so many people in this country doing the most amazing things, I just think not only has this Prime Minister lost touch, I think this government is on the way out. And that is just a, a real clear message that was being sent. And, and a lot of the political commentators are talking about that today. Social media is such a buzz that if I reckon if they put an election on right now, Tony Abbott wouldn't even... He not only wouldn't win his own seat, but two-thirds of the uh, Liberals would be sitting there going, what am I going to do for a job now? Mm. Yes, it, uh, it, it seems an extraordinary decision to make a, a prince in England. Uh, an Australian night. Anyway, now, uh, the Australian of the Year, Rosie Batty, a, a bittersweet win for her. A bittersweet. And, you know, look, I, I think when we ever nominate the Australian of the Year, there's going to be people out there today who are going to say, you know, why she won that, why, why? And then there's going to be people saying, fantastic. And you know what? We all get behind the Australian of the Year. Adam Goods was a slightly controversial one last year and, and one that uh, why would an AFL footballer, an Aboriginal AFL footballer, the uh, Australian of the Year, and look, he put forward and and worked hard over the year to use that title, and uh, and hopefully Rosie's going to be able to do the same thing. A very sad, obviously brought about by a very sad case, but um, a very serious issue in in Australian society here, domestic violence, and uh, and one that we need to uh, to put down, uh, put away. But. Uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, just raising awareness around this, and this is what these kind of awards are there for, is to raise awareness around issues and, uh, and let's start dealing with them. And I think, you know, each Australian of the Year has done an amazing job, particularly in the last 10, 15 years, where they've been able to highlight particularly their sector. We see coming from the health or the, or the science areas, they've, uh, they've done amazing things, and uh, hopefully Rosie's going to be able to do exactly the same. Same thing. Yes. Now, all women, as you say, won uh, in the uh, category this uh, Australia Day. Uh, Senior Australian of the Year, uh, the author Jackie French. Uh, the Young Australian of the Year, uh, Drizana Levitsky Gray, who I, I don't know of, but uh, she's a deaf lady, isn't she? She's a deaf lady, a young 21 year old who's basically travelled the world. She's been advocating for death rights and, uh, and, and just pushing for deaf children to access, uh, get access to Auckland. Now, the sign language of the Australian uh, deaf community from birth, she's, she's really a girl that has just uh, has emerged and is just doing amazing things. And, you know, when that's, that is, that is an Australian of the Year. That is deserved of one of these titles, not a prince that sits over in the United Kingdom who's probably got 168 titles to his name already. And, uh, and to add another one, sir, uh, it just seems a little ridiculous. So I know I'm focusing back on the negative there, but uh, look, some great, young Australia, great young Australian doing some amazing things. And, uh, and I think, who was the other, the other award that... Uh, oh, know, Juliet the Wright. ...the local hero award, and that was uh, to Juliet Wright, whose uh, who's initiative to bring back, uh, bring back a big difference, uh, alleviating poverty and distributing goods back when uh, the Queensland floods were on, which was, uh, as we know, a very a big, a big tragedy that was happening up there in, the, in North Australia, and, uh, and that's the kind of stuff, again... That we, we, we need to get right. Yes, if, you, if you're going to fling a title around, any of those could have had, or well, perhaps any, but some of those uh, ladies could have had a dame put in front of their name, really, couldn't they? Now, we'll get on to the extraordinary events of Queensland and the lead up to the election coming up in a few days. And it's what's now the Premier, you now, Campbell Newman's getting very shirty. He wants a shirt front, in fact, Alan Jones. Is that right? Well, partly, partly because of the great work that Fairfax Network has gone away and done is uh, with through 4BC and uh, the merge there with Macquarie, um, Alan Jones has all of a sudden become available. And Alan Jones has been putting on a one-hour show between 8 and 9 on 4BC. Oh, he that's right, out yes. of holidays, the good man. Um, you know, he, uh, uh, he, he decided, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an hour program and focus on the state election because for him it was important. He's been getting stuck into the Premier, Campbell Newman, and, uh, and even to the point where the Premier now is actually suing for defamation. What's his beef with Campbell Newman? Do you know? Well, is there any particular one? It's a beef because... 
was there was a promise that was made, particularly over a mine and uh, over some developments that uh, just haven't come into fruition. Uh. And to the point that Alan Jones has called him a liar. And, uh, and this has been well received by some of the, the larger uh, white collar uh, heads in Queensland. And, and also, too, we know that a, a certain Clive Palmer is in very much support of the way that Alan Jones has been, I guess, badgering the, the current Premier of Queensland, Campbell Newman, so much to the point that he's even offered to pay for the legal fees that are going to be involved with this defamation. Now, look... What? 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 So he's gonna, what, are you going to pay Alan Jones? He's offered to pay Alan Jones's legal fees? Well, you fee. know that Alan Jones, he, he's, he's a little bit cash-strapped. He, he no. doesn't have too many dollars in the bank no. account. No, no. Poor guy. You know, it's a simple, he humble guy. Just quietly. <laughs> yes. But anyway, he, I think but he, Clive Palmer yeah. is, is very much getting right behind him because he is putting that kind of pressure. But what it is, what this is, this, by the by, with all of this, it just shows the political naivety, and particularly when you're dealing with the media, all of a sudden the issues of Queensland have come off the table, and now we're talking and looking at what uh, the performance of Campbell Newman, and has he or has he not been lying? You know, uh, Alan Jones is, uh, is, 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 is in some cases can be very, very uh, hard-headed around the way that he approaches uh, his discussions. He wouldn't come out without it, without any real fact or, or real position there. And the fact that the pr Premier is going to sue him during the middle of an election, all of a sudden the issues of Queensland have come off the table and we're just focusing on that. And there is just a real sign of political naivety there where you're going to sue probably one of Australia's most and well-known uh, media personalities right in the middle of a state election. That suggests to me that uh, that poor old media advisor and legal advisor of Campbell Newman better be looking, uh, getting his Sikh uh, resume together, because I don't think you're going to have a job for very much longer. No, it's, as you say, the timing is rather strange, isn't it? Uh, Clive Palmer coming t to the party, so to help. My God, he's a grandstand of the, the old Clive, isn't he? Oh, he, he sees an opportunity and he, he'll go for it. And oh, uh, no. I tell you what, we'll be seeing. Clive for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> He'll outlive us all, probably. All right, now we're going to have to wrap it up here, and I'll have to say goodbye to you, Nick. It's been an absolute pleasure for the last couple of years talking to you and these once a week chats about media and what's making news in our country, uh, social media or traditional or otherwise. And I wish you all the best for the future. And thank you to you, boys. And look, um, look from, from the bottom of my heart, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the last two years. The reason this is such an important medium, this is the reason what, the, what you and Mark do together is such an important thing because I knew back when I was eight years of age, uh, I used to stay over at my grandmother's house who, who lost her husband many, many years earlier. And uh, we sort of, sort of shared it amongst uh, her uh, grandchildren. And I always asked her, I said, Grandma, why? Why have you got the radio on overnight? Why? I, I constantly hear it. It's something that I sort of woke up to on occasions, but I could hear it in, in my grandmother's room. And she said, it's a friend. It's a friend of mine yeah. that I can wake up to, I can go to sleep to, and I'll always be there. And I think that's what you boys have been doing for, for all of Melbourne for such a long time. And, and those before you, it's such an important medium and it's a friendship. And all the people that are out there, I've loved listening to a lot of the talkback calls that are part of your program. And there's a lot of people, as many that do call in, 95% of them are just sitting back and just listening to their friends. And you guys, you've been great friends, and I wish you both the best of luck. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, it is appreciated, Nick, and all the best for the future for you too. Uh, Nick Hayes, overnight on 3AW. Because I was exposed.